John, thanks so much for taking the time, man. How's things with you? What is up, Meltdown? It's good to see you again. We we interviewed about a year ago, I think. And yeah. I haven't seen you since then. So yeah. it's good to see you again. Yeah, I think that uh, I think the last time we interviewed, it was uh, maybe it might have been on Instagram, I think, even when we were doing those kind of things. It was. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because I had commented. I said, look, it looks like you've been keeping in shape over the uh, <laughs> pandemic. Have, have you been keeping it up or have you been cheating? No, you got, I, you I, 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 guess, I guess I got a little bit still going. So I, I, I try to keep it <laughs> shape as much. As I hey, listen, I got up and played hockey already this morning. You know what I'm saying? I got to get the got to get the exercise. Yeah. Yeah. What about that's you? That's right. Yeah. No. Hey, I've been touring, man. So. um I'm I'm lucky. I'm happy. I'm blessed. We were on the road for a couple of months mm. and uh, so happy to be back out with people. And the, I guess the reason I say that is because um, I I can eat a little bit uh, worse on the road because I'm playing every night. You know, <laughs> right. you, it, you're you're burning six or seven hundred calories a show so I can have a donut if I want to. Don't <laughs> judge me. Right. <laughs> No, no doubt. So, so is it, is it, I mean, I, I didn't really have this on my list to talk about, but I mean, is it tough to kind of stay kind of good on tour or do you just kind of cheat a little bit here and there then maybe take a couple of days and. Yeah, you know, it, it is, you, you definitely have to implore a bit of self-discipline to, to keep doing rock music. Cause uh, I mean, look, everybody that's traveled for a living, whatever your job may be, if you've had a business trip, everybody knows traveling's exhausting. You're staying in a hotel. It's not your own bed. The, you know, the food, I, everything about traveling is hard. You're in a bus, so it hurts your body. You're rocking on stage and head banging. Uh, there's a lot that you have to implore self-discipline wise. So, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm kind of joking, but I do try to watch what I eat, try to keep exercising because this is still its 25th year. Wow. In, in other words, I ate 25, brother. And uh, <laughs> I want to go for another 25 years. So you got to keep self discipline up. Yeah, it's funny. That was my uh, 26th anniversary yesterday here at the radio station. So, oh, fantastic. Same, so. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool, man. Man, who would have thought? So. so, you got this new record coming out. Uh, Dominion comes out on, uh, on January 14th. And I was, Ooh. you know, now what is the deal with you guys in one name record uh, titles? I don't know. It was never the plan. And, and most every record, I will try to name it something longer. And everybody's like, I don't really know. And then I come back with a one word. Like, yeah. like for instance, so, you know, our, our, our record, Awake, that uh, had Monster and Hero. And the third single is called Awake and Alive. Well, I thought maybe Awake and Alive would be a great title, title for a record. Like, I don't know. What about Awake? That's it. <laughs> and every, every album is like that. Like it's too long that way. And so it just ended up basically being one word titles. I don't know what the deal is, man. I don't know. You have a one word name, but it's two <laughs> words put into one. So what do you right. want? <laughs> <laughs> I've only used it for 20. Well, actually 31 years or 32 years, but, but yeah, it's like, remember when uh, disturbed put out their record. And I think every single title on every song had like one, it was one word titles as well. So. Yeah, well, you know, that also was a trend, of course, in the, in the 90s, you know, 90s was uh, was was such a rejection of of the 80s in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way in music, because, you know, it was all about minimalistic, stripping it back down, you know, Nirvana and Pearl Jam and that grunge era was was like saying no to all the the overproduced in their view, overproduced hair metal bands. I love overproduced hair metal bands personally. <laughs> um you know, but that, and so it was like every song title would be like blur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the, these things go in cycles, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah, you mentioned the, you know, the, the, the Nirvana and stuff like that. That's kind of the stuff you probably grew up on, like the grunge stuff, right? Is that really what got you into, into rock and roll or what was it? No, actually I was really into eighties, uh, eighties. I mean, for me personally, just being totally honest, the nineties, at first was the death of everything I loved about rock music, you know? And of course I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just being honest. I was like, yeah. I didn't understand it. I, I was like, that's not how you play drums. That's not how you play guitar. That's not how you sing. Cause I was in love with hair metal and not just hair metal, but, but just metal, uh, uh, Metallica, um, Maiden, Bon Jovi, which is more like pop rock, really, but but had those great that great arena rock stuff. I love right. that stuff. It took me a long time actually to to kind of get into '90s music, which I did. I'm a huge Alice in Chains fan, 
SDP. Um, I actually loved Bush. And then came what I personally love about the 90s, which I would call it more of the, uh, it, it, as it was changing, like corn. That corn is one of the best yeah, like the rock new bands stuff. alive. Yeah, I would call that new metal almost. Yeah, new metal, yeah, new metal, and, yeah. yeah. And some of this really interesting stuff, uh, Manson and Zombie, more on the industrial side. And so for me, it wasn't, uh, the grunge stuff grew on me, of course. Um, but I, that was never really my forte. I was always into something a bit more theatrical. Maybe that's what you would say, which is why Skillet sounds the way Skillet does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you're, you're a few years younger than me. So I wasn't sure like where you grew up, you know, uh, I, you just mentioned eighties rock before we started talking about this. I didn't really want to get in this whole eighties rock uh, grunge thing, but now that we're here, I guess we'll talk about it for a second. We just said like Manson and zombie and all this kind of stuff and being from like, I don't know, maybe the Christian side of things. I mean, uh, do, do you look at that stuff and just like listen to the music or, you know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of that stuff is kind of like, you know, tainted with different, like kind of evil things. Sure, I know what you mean. You know, this is just my personal philosophy. Not all Christians would like to hear me say this, but I don't care. I'm my own guy. You know, I like to say what I believe. I think that what makes great art is if something is authentic. Does it mean that I'm not sometimes offended by great art, but the fact that I am so offended can mean that it bothered me at like Clockwork Orange you know, the film, it bothers me so much that I have to say, wow, that they, they really, it was authentically done. And I kind of find some of that stuff. I'm, I'm actually a humongous Marilyn Manson fan. Um, yeah, I wouldn't agree with the lyrics. It's not my worldview, but I believe that he believes what he's saying. And that's why it's so poignant to me. It affects me because I'm like, yeah, that's different than what I would say, but it's hitting me. And I think it's an interesting a thing to listen to as people are honest about who they are, honest about what they believe. To me, that's kind of what makes cool art. Not all Christians would like to hear me say that, but I think that makes good art. So yeah, people would probably be surprised at, um, you know, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite band say a lot of things that, that probably are not, uh, are, are not, you know, a gr Christian, let's say, but I'm like, hey, they're being honest, and I believe that they mean it. And that, I, I think that's what makes good art. I also think that's what makes people like Skillet who, who are not religious people or don't agree with everything I would say. But they believe that I mean it, and I believe it, and I'm not trying to put someone else down if they don't agree with me. This is just my expression. That's what rock music is, you know? Yeah, that's interesting that you say this because I was, you know, I was I was watching the video earlier and I saw it, you guys, you guys have three million, you know, subscribers and of course millions of fans. You guys have sold millions of records and you've kind of always stuck to your guns. And that's really uh, something that I can really appreciate, especially in, in these times. It's like sometimes people don't stick to their guns for whatever reason, but you're kind of you you are authentic as well. Well, that's nice. Thanks. Yeah, you know, sticking to your guns can sometimes <laughs> sometimes make you popular and it can sometimes make you not popular. But, but I do think in the long run, the, the people that are with you are, are they're going to be with you and, and they like that about you. And that's why, you know, we just got off a tour and it was, I just love that rock music. I shouldn't say rock music. I should say all music. Music brings all these different kinds of, of people together. And that's something I always say at my concerts. I say, Hey, Right now at this show, this is going to be one of the only places in America that is going to have Republicans and Democrats and Libertarians and Independents, Christians, atheists, white people, black people, brown people, whatever, rich people, poor people. We're all together and we can actually agree on something. And that is that music makes us feel good. And you, you respond to a song. And you interpret it to mean something that it means to you. It might not be why they wrote it, but it means something different to me. And so I think sticking to your guns is good because people know that you're not always trying to sell them. You know, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm making art and I appreciate that you like it. You can take my song how you want to take it and I can mean it the way I want to mean it. And we can actually agree to disagree on some things, hang out with people that don't agree with you. Man, we could use that in America right now, you know? Yeah, there's no doubt. And, you know, you, you, you struck on something. I've actually talked about this a bunch of times, but I think if one thing the pandemic taught me about not going to concerts and different things like that 
was that you're in that room. Like I saw you guys at the Fillmore a few years ago and I've seen you guys at different shows, but when I'm in that room in that theater, we're all watching you guys and you're kind of surrounded by this, the people that have a same, uh, I guess a, a same love of live music, you know, whether you're Republican, Democrat, independent, whatever. And so you put all these people in the same room. Not only does it make you feel good, but you're also surrounded by people of the same ilk I've been saying. Oh, absolutely. It's one of the only commonalities that people have in America. Now, you may see that at sporting sporting events um, as well, because people are, you know, they all come together because they love the Packers. I'm, I'm in Wisconsin, as you know. Right. They love the Packers and they hate the Bears. That's the only <laughs> thing they can agree on. Right. But it, in that moment, we all have this thing together. And I think that that's a beautiful experience. And I don't want it to change, meaning that I don't want to play concerts for only Christian people, uh, being you know that I'm Christian. I don't want to do that. That's not why I play rock and roll music. If I wanted to do that, I would just sing at church or something like that. I want to play music for all kinds of different people so we can all have something in common and transcend how much life can suck sometimes. Life is wonderful, but it can have some sucky times like we all may have noticed over the last <laughs> year and a half it's been really difficult so let's rock out together and let's encourage one another to overcome it you know together and see less people in depression less people having suicidal thoughts which has really been on the rise i have two teenagers teenage suicide is on the rise especially for young girls let's do something where we can encourage people to overcome this this stuff that really is it's a big deal right now I yeah. agree with you, Meltdown. Let's do it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you for president. I got you for president. So hey, Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, John, so Dominion comes out on uh, January 14th, like we were just talking about. So, of course, the uh, first single is out there, Surviving the Game. Another song that could actually would almost be used in the WWE as well. I'm sure that's not what you wrote it for. Uh, but what's the rest of the record? Uh, what, kind of, what kind of stuff are we looking at with this album? Well, I do think that the record, and yes, it could be, and I hope it is used in the WWE. Uh, as you know, you know, we're both fans of that. Um, yeah, th the record is very aggressive. Uh, it, it's a little heavier. People probably noticed that with the first track, Surviving the Game. I think it's to do with this pent-up, <laughs> quite literally, pent-up aggression. Um, th 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 it's, it's a refusal to give up. You know, it's a refusal to just throw in the towel and all the various things I just said, depression and yada, yada, loneliness, escapism, whatever. It's a refusal to give in to fear. All right. There is a lot to be afraid about today, but I don't want to live my life in fear of those things. Right. Fear is, as it says in Dune, which is a, an awesome film, by the way. Oh, I haven't big, seen that yet. <laughs> oh, I'm a big fan of, of, I read Dune, you know, when I was younger and I love the books, but there's a great quote from Dune that says fear is the mind killer. That's what it is. Fear is the mind killer. There's a lot to be afraid about it, but you don't have to surrender to it. And, and those kind of feelings, I think, produced a heavier skillet record. It's a record with a lot of attitude, a, a record with just a lot of like balls to it, honestly. So that's what I'm excited about. Hope people hear, hope it's inspiring to them to, to push forward and not give in to that fear. I think that's the main message of the album. And so, I mean, this might be a, 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 a you know obvious question, but did the, the pandemic played into that heaviness or that looking Certainly. for something else or whatever? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no question because the C songs were just, they were coming out. I wasn't even planning on um, releasing a record. I was thinking we can do that later. We'll wait and see. Um, We'll get back into touring, but these songs were just coming out, and I realized how passionately, uh, I think, and personally, I wouldn't just say passionately, I would say personally, how personally it meant to me to see friends of mine, to be honest with you, not, not in a judgmental way to them, they have not fared well through the pandemic. It has affected them. They, they have suffered in depressions. Uh, I've had friends that have kind of given in to substance abuse as their way of coping with it and they realize that they're in substance abuse and now they're trying to walk out and they don't know how to get out of it because it's it's got a hold on them right mm. and that affected me in a personal way and i think that some of that those personal issues very much came out in this in, in the form of aggression which is like we're taking it head on 
do not bow the knee down uh, to this fear. Do not give in to that fear, which is why like the, you know, the, the, the lyric of the single says, um, I can be unstoppable, going to walk through hell, going to shake the walls. That is an aggressive act towards that fear, an aggressive act towards that depression, as opposed to a defensive strategy. And I hope it encourages other people to be offensive against that crap. And I just, uh, I was looking through some of the questions on your uh, Twitter the other day. You guys uh, went on and did a, a Twitter Q&A. And it's so funny. By the way, when are you going to England? When are you going to Texas? Yeah. When are you going to Los <laughs> Angeles? <laughs> would, it, would it, we all love to know, you know. Uh, it's so yeah, funny. It's sometime. like, yeah, ask, ask us your questions. When are you coming to Albuquerque? <laughs> exactly. And sometimes I'm like, uh, we just came last week, you know. Check <laughs> you know. Sometimes like, I was just there. You yeah. missed the show. You know, I do think that it's interesting, uh, the overseas stuff. And I think that, you know, we're all planning overseas concerts, but you just don't know everyone realizes that there's some things that are out of your control and you don't know what's going to happen. And I think that Americans, we feel like that even with our, you know, our own country, we don't know when the next wave comes or when the next, whatever go, when a hospitals may be overwhelmed, when X, Y, or Z. And so that pushes back into that anxiety, you know, of people mm -hmm. like, what's the future going to be like? There are things I can't control. And, and this is also, I want to mention this, why I called the record Dominion, because there are things outside of your control, but you still have control of, of your mind. You still have control of your body. You don't have to become someone that you don't want to become just because you can't control if you are going to, I don't know, fill in the blank, have a job in January or be able to go to a football game in January. Yeah, you can't control that, but you do have things you can control. And, and that's what dominion is about. It's about authority. It's about rule. I don't know. That's something I feel passionate about. Mm -hmm. And so how did the uh, pandemic affect you personally? I mean, you know, you wrote this record and you, you were doing stuff, but were there days where you were just like, man, this is never going to end? Or, you know, now we're a year and a half <laughs> in. I mean, it, you know, how did, how did it affect you and your wife and your family and stuff? And even the, even the other guys, uh, Jen and Seth? Sure, sure. Well, I, yeah, it did affect me. You know, I know that I sound very inspirational or positive, mm -hmm. and that is, of course, my nature. If anybody's listened to one of our interviews before, right. but that doesn't mean that I didn't have days where I was, just, or weeks, let's be honest, that I was like, "This sucks. It does suck." I mean, you you're not seeing your your extended family. You can't see your your friends, or or maybe a lot of people have family that don't live next to them and they're missing their nieces and their nephews or even their grandkids or what have you. It does suck. And it did affect me, but I just kind of, you, you know, we just kind of refused to focus on that aspect, focus on what you can focus on, which kind of goes into playing while well, I was joking around with you about working out, you know, yeah. you know, there are things you can focus on fo time with your own kids. If your kids, you know, if you're still in a place where your kids live with you and, and that kind of stuff. So I think the band fared very well in, in terms of that. And I also found, to be honest with you, I don't know if this is cheesy for some people, but I personally found a lot of contentment in giving out to other people. And, and that was done through various fundraising activities, raising money for for uh, uh, people who had lost their jobs and, and literally can't eat. They don't know how they're going to pay the bills in, in, in a literal fashion. <laughs> like, yeah. how, how are we going to do this? So we did some fundraising activities for them. And there's so much contentment when you give back. That's just a principle. When you give back, you realize how much you have. It makes you grateful. And, it, and it's a great feeling to know that you help someone else in their darkest times. And so we did a lot of that locally. And I will say that was the one of the best things that happened from the pandemic is that I got to be more a part of my local community and help give back to some of the poorer communities and, and, and after school programs. A lot of these kids couldn't go to school and that it hit harder for the inner city uh, uh, school systems. So doing some of these tutoring programs, there's so much good work being done. And I got to be a part of it. And I'm not saying that to brag on myself. I'm saying to say that it took my focus off of how much this sucks and made me grateful for all the things that I have. Right. Yeah. And of course, you know, giving and helping other people, there's always like this, this karma effect for the most part, but that's not why you do it. 
but it does make you feel good and it does help out other people. So, yes, that that is what uh, let's see, academic people call a concomitant effect. I've learned <laughs> a, a concomitant. What a great word. It means that's not why you do it, but it's a wonderful side benefit that, that comes from that. So I think that's pretty cool. Right. I remember the one time I paid for this woman's clock to get fixed. It was like forty dollars. And I thought, man, I'm doing such great good in the world. And I went home and my dog had ripped up my carpet. So, so sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> there are no there are no guarantees in life. You still did the good thing, even though you didn't get the result that you wanted. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I helped her out a little bit. Hey, a couple more things here for you. I know that you got a, a lot of things going on, but uh, working with uh, Kevin and Kane on uh, Sherco. Tell me about that. Was that was that a different experience? Oh, I love the Churcos. For some people that, that are listening that don't know, Kevin Churco is, as far as I'm concerned, legendary producer. Produced all the Five Finger Death Punch records, all the In This Moment albums. Uh, he produced great Papa Roach record. I'm at that disturbed. I mean, that list goes on and on. And uh, he's my favorite producer. So we have done work together before on my last few records. He, he, him and his son, Kane, who is also a writer and producer. We wrote a couple of songs together on our last project. But this time we got to do the whole record together. And man, it was just awesome. I love that they're, they're just, uh, Kevin is a genius. Kane is a killer songwriter. And we just had so much fun writing the record. But you want to know something really weird, man. We recorded the entire album and we were never in the same room together because of, of the pandemic. I, is that bizarre? So we would get on Zoom and we would talk about stuff. We would say, yeah, okay, we'd write. We'd try, try this and I, I'll record something and then I can Dropbox it over to their studio and then they can add to it was the weirdest thing we we've got guitars done in nashville vocals done here in wisconsin uh editing done in las vegas where the churcos it was completely bizarre but what i enjoyed about working with the churcos you know they just they bring a real heaviness most of everything they produce just sounds hard right and and that's what i love disturbed five finger it's it's produced in a theatrical way, which as we already discussed earlier, I particularly love. It's produced in a very theatrical and musical way, but it just has a, gr uh, a hardness to it, punchiness. And I think that that's why this record is a bit heavier as well, you know, and it just, the song has lended itself to it. So I think that people are going to really, I think Skillet fans are going to love the album. Yeah, and those, uh, those records that you're talking about are very polished too. Very polished, you know, and everybody's got, Everybody's got the things they're looking for. And I love polished, polished albums. You yeah. know, I mean, gosh, if you want to talk about, you know, Dr. Feelgood. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you listen to Dr. Feelgood. That could have been recorded last year. It sounds amazing. The drums sound amazing. Five Finger Death Punch has that same polished sound. It's very poppy, but it's very heavy. And I think the skillet has always done poppy and heavy. So doing with Churcos, I think that's why it made a heavier record. I think it's one of the best records we've ever made. And I don't always say that, you know, <laughs> so. Uh, I've never I, heard I, an artist say that before, it. so. Uh, well, art, artists are, are, you know, are always hoping it's the best one. Um, but I think it's one of the best ones we made. Yeah. A uh, couple more things here. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I want to get your take on what you think of uh, what's going on with uh, Dave Chappelle and, and how you were just talking before about, you know, being real and, and kind of sticking to your guns. And, you know, by the way, that um, I, I, I talked with Bert Kreischer about this the other day. I don't know if you've seen that special, but it was hysterical. And, uh, you know, you're, you're in. I was just curious what, you, what your thoughts were with a guy like Dave. Sure, sure. I have seen the special. Uh, I have thought for a decade, Dave Chappelle is the funniest man alive. And I don't say that because he never offends me. <laughs> I, again, as we talked earlier, I'm guessing that me and Dave Chappelle don't agree on a whole lot of stuff. He says plenty of offensive things about Christianity or about every race. You choose, you choose white, black. Asian, anything, anything you want. Dave Chappelle goes after him. I just think that's why it's funny. I just think he is outrageously hilarious. That's not to say that I'm not offended, um, but, but he's hysterical. And I got to be honest, and I know that we're in a time that everything that you say is going to make somebody hate your guts. <laughs> I don't want to make anybody hate me, but I personally love, I love what he's saying. 
um, a sta- I should say, I love what he's standing up for. And this is coming from somebody, like I say, I- I'm a Christian. There are things that I will not watch because I find them offensive, but I have never called for someone to be, to, to not have the platform to be, to be censored or something of that nature. Now talking about actual violence is a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. Okay. I, uh, I'm not talking about actual violent talk. But in terms of things that we just say, that's too offensive to say, I don't think that that's, that is not going to make for a freer country. That is going to make for a tyrannical, that's very puritanical. Mm. And we've also had Puritan um, tyranny, as we saw in the Salem witch trials, where you had this psychotic madness come on all these Christian people to start going out hunting for witches. We don't want that. And that that's kind of my own people, if you will. Uh, when I say my own people, I don't mean that I, I am a witch hunter, but I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That's Those were Christians doing things they shouldn't be doing. We don't want that, but we also don't want this new Puritanism that says that you can't say something from an ideological perspective, from a political perspective, from a religious perspective. We don't want that. That is going to create a culture where people are afraid to talk. And so I actually really, I'm very supportive of, of Dave Chappelle, whether he offends me or not, supportive of what he's saying. I'll tell you someone else I support that says a lot of things I agree with, who also hates, I don't mean he hates Christians, but hates Christianity is Bill Maher. I agree with Bill Maher all the time. And I have for a decade. He says tons of things I disagree with, but he says lots of things that I think are poignant and interesting and I don't want him canceled, no matter how much he thinks religion is stupid. I like hearing what he has to say. And I appreciate that I think that he thinks that I should have the ability to say what I want to say. So, again, I think that's how we can come at these things, having faith um, and generosity towards others. Yeah, he, he, he has well thought out ideas or well thought out comments that he makes so he can yes he can talk about it you know i met him at the uh woodstock 94 i'll never forget he was we, me and him were standing underneath the light and i looked at him and i said hey you're bill maher like it was one of the dumbest comments i'd ever said to somebody <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah i am what's yeah, wrong so with I was you like, how, down? How, how do you answer that so Hey, final That's thing, of awesome. course, uh, you're just talking about, you know, obviously, you, you know, the, the, the Christian uh, uh, slant and everything to your band. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Have you guys ever put out any sort of Christmas song, album, anything like that? No, no, we've never done anything like that. Funny enough, I've had so many people ask me that this year and hardly ever any other year. I don't know if it's because it's becoming oh. a, a thing. I don't know what's happening, but I'm like. I'm like, is God trying to tell me something? Because everybody keeps saying, and here I am with Meltdown. He's like, are you doing a, you know, who knows? Maybe God's speaking in a really strange well, way, but no, we've your never done 25th that. year, you know, it's about time you got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> a skill at Christmas. Maybe we should. I don't know. Yeah, it, it sounds like the, uh, well, you know, like, look, uh, D. Snyder and I mean, Ronnie Dio and all these guys have done a Christmas track here and there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe. Who knows, man? Maybe we should. Maybe there's something wrong with me. (laughs) There's nothing (laughs) wrong with you, John. That's for sure. Well, listen, good luck to you guys in the band. And of course, uh, say hi to everybody for us. Uh, Dominion comes out on January 14th and Surviving the Game is out right now. Oh, my God. Yeah, I forgot the the, the Jesus music doc you got out right now. Uh, uh, Awaken Alive to Truth, uh, the book. I mean, you're, you're, you're a man that never stops working, huh? It's it's been very, very, you know, busy, you know, but I, but I love that. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And if people want to know uh, some of the behind the scenes of the new single uh, or the video that's out sort of surviving the game, make sure you go to the Skillet uh, Instagram or Facebook. That's Skillet Music. Um, and we, we've been putting some behind the scenes from the tour. I mean, I, I got to warn you, it's really dumb. It's supposed to be dumb. It's like, it's like all the funny, dumb stuff we do backstage. It's, it's juvenile, but who doesn't love a little bit of juve, you know, dumb and dumber type humor, you know? So <laughs> if you're looking for something like that, go check it out and make sure you check out the new song. And, and pretty soon also, we're going to be releasing um, another, the next single on the album. I, I don't mean as a radio release, but it'll, it will release for sale on iTunes and Spotify and whatnot and, and yada, yada. So that comes out in a few weeks. So if people are interested in the album, please go check that out. All right, John, as always, thanks, man. It's always great seeing you. 
It's great to see you. Stay safe. Stay healthy, man. Keep not eating those donuts. I'll try to. But we're at Thanksgiving time. It's time for cookies and and apparently skillet Christmas albums. I'm going to see what I can do for you. That's right. Have yourself a very Merry Christmas or whatever. <laughs> a very Merry Christmas. All right, buddy. It's good to see you, man. Keep rocking.